Hey guys, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and today we're checking out the portable yet powerful Mavic Pro that weighs just 743 grams. This is my early review of the Mavic after just a few weeks of use and I will have a full review in the coming weeks so keep your eyes peeled to the channel uh, but this one will be a little bit of a shorter review and just my experiences so far with the Mavic Pro. So the flight time out of one battery is about 27 minutes. Now I've got the three batteries and I would get about an hour and five minutes of flight time and that's pushing it to the point that it actually forces itself to land. Now that is pretty amazing guys, an hour and five minutes of flight time is impressive by any standard, let alone for something as small as the Mavic Pro. I also want to mention that you need to follow your local government's aviation laws. So for me in Australia, I have been following CASA's laws. This is just to protect people around you and to ensure that everyone is safe. Now with the Mavic's control range, you can get to about seven kilometers away from the controller, which is impressive as hell for something as tiny as this again. It's constantly connected to satellites. So at a normal time for me, I would probably be hitting about 12 satellites and at the optimal time I'm hitting about 19 satellites so seven kilometers away is insane for me personally I've only gone about 1.3 K away and I had a controller signal error I don't know whether that was just the relay with the video on my phone because when I took it home the footage was smooth as hell didn't drop frames or anything like that or whether it actually was a signal error with the controller regardless I turned around and came back at that point uh, it's just one of those things you don't really want to be flying and pushing it too far so that you do lose signal because that's how you lose a drone of this standard right here. The Mavic is also an extremely zippy little drone, hitting up to 65 km an hour speeds. And for me personally, I've hit about 66, I believe, and that was against the wind. So that was extremely impressive. This thing just glides through the air. It's super aerodynamic. And the fact that it's tiny as well, it can just push through the wind. It's amazing. You also have a three axis gimbal. The camera on here is amazing as well. The gimbal works really well. And the camera can record up to 4K as well. And the image quality is just breathtaking on this camera here. You also have a 12 megapixel camera resolution when it comes to taking still photos. The drone and the controller is $1,700 Australian, so this is an expensive drone and you want to make sure that everything works 100%. So I have a few notable things that I wanted to mention to you guys. The first thing is the return home feature. So I noticed that this feature was extremely stable and controlled. It landed within about five meters of the home point that I set, which is extremely accurate. So just just make sure that you take off from an open field and everything will be fine in case you lose some sort of signal with it or in case you have to activate the home mode. Now the other thing I noticed in the home mode was that it dodged obstacles and it adjusted its landing process which was extremely impressive as well. Something that I was a little hesitant about but it did an amazing job in its automated mode. The other thing that I've noticed that is a little bit frustrating is my iPhone 7 Plus is having issues with the follow me mode. So this mode actually uses the GPS signal from your device device and I've been having a weak GPS signal error message pop up. This is really frustrating and this isn't just me that is experiencing this issue. I've seen online in a lot of different forums that other users are complaining about the same issue as well. So just be mindful if you do want the follow me mode that the iPhone 7 Plus is having some issues right now. Uh, there is an active track mode which does a very similar thing. This is just software so it tracks you based on the camera and based on your movements. The follow me mode tracks you based on the GPS signal from your device. So one of them is software and one of them is a hardware function. Now certain wind conditions have definitely made me feel hesitant to fly, but the Mavic itself can withstand a level 5 wind, also called a fresh breeze, and this wind speed is defined as 29 to 38 kilometers per hour, so that's really full on winds. But Sometimes when I take off and I get to a hover point, I notice my Mavic will be getting blown off to one side and it will be leaning drastically. Now, you can adjust the gimbal to still get some extremely stable and centered shots, but because of its size and weight, I do feel a little bit hesitant to take off sometimes. Um, definitely with a larger drone, you wouldn't be having these issues. It handles perfectly well in super breezy days, um, but just something to mention that I was a little bit hesitant and I'm sure that a lot of you people out there would be very hesitant for flying a $1,700 drone, you'd want to make sure that it's a perfect condition and a perfect day to actually take off and get some really awesome shots. Until you actually see the camera on the Mavic Pro, you will have no idea how tiny this camera is and how amazing it is. The fact that it can produce 
crisp 4K footage from such a tiny little lens is breathtaking, guys. One thing I will mention, though, is the ISO will only go up to 3200, so this camera does struggle in low-light situations. That's just something to look out for when you're trying to get a sunset. Make sure that you've got a nice amount of exposure and get the sun just before it goes down. Otherwise, you will notice the footage will go a little bit muddy and it doesn't look fantastic. Another thing to be mindful of when landing the drone is the fact that the camera is so low to the ground. So you need to be careful of rocks kicking up, any sort of dirt or grass in the way, and you need to make sure that you land on a flat surface. And that's the reason why I'm buying landing gear and landing legs for the drone, just to ensure that the camera is far away from the ground so that I don't damage it. because the camera and the gimbal will be one of the most expensive components on this little drone here. Flying my Mavic Pro has got to be one of my favorite pastimes now. It's just amazing to have that extra dimension to explore. The fact that I can fly and go anywhere I want without any boundaries besides the limited government boundaries that they have set is actually really amazing guys. It's super freeing to be able to go wherever you want and to be able to capture amazing footage from such a tiny drone to then just land it, fold it back, and disappear. It's amazing, guys. It's just the coolest thing. And coming from a point where, you know, I was brought up where tech was starting to become relevant and gaming was getting really big, and to get to this point right now where I'm 24 and I can fold out a drone and fly it with pinpoint precision, that is just amazing, guys. So overall, the experience has been amazing. The image quality on the camera itself is super sharp. Uh, it's not oversaturated or overexposed or anything. You have full control over shutter speed, ISO, and also the uh, white balance as well. So it's really cool to have you know full control over the camera. You have a few other settings as well, which I'll go through in the full review. Um, the only thing, like I mentioned, is it's not great in low light, but Technically, in Australia, I'm not really meant to fly a drone at night, so that doesn't really bother me at all. The fact that I can just pass the controller over to a friend mid-flight, they've never picked up a drone in their life, and they can take control of the Mavic and get used to it within a few minutes, that right there is a testament of how amazing this piece of technology is. It flies beautifully, the camera's amazing, and everything is just so nice, and the finish on it is great. The controller has a great build to it as well. I was nervous about the controller, but it feels super robust and solid. The drone itself, the folding mechanism, I was worried that that was going to wear out over time. It feels really solid still, and I've been folding it out numerous times now. It just feels amazing, guys. So they've put a lot of effort into the aesthetics and the feel and the design, and the software obviously works amazingly well with your device, whether that be iOS or Android. And all of the different functions and features that the Mavic offer, this is a powerhouse of a little drone. It has has so much functionality, it has so much power in it, and it's such a tiny drone, guys. So I will have my full review where I thoroughly go through all the different features and everything that uh, I enjoyed and didn't enjoy about the Mavic and just my experiences so far. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate your support. Make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the full review and everything on the Mavic. Make sure to have a splendid day and peace out.